Hey guys, it's Greg from BitGoblin again, and today I'm going to show you all how to install software on Linux, which yes, I have done before, but this time we're going to look at how to use Flatpak. It's a new agey distro agnostic approach to packaging and installing applications, which bundles in the application's dependencies so that no matter what library and versions of said libraries are available on your distro, you can install whatever version of a piece of software you want without running into any dependency conflicts or affecting your main system. So let's get to it. You smell that? It smells like a bit goblin. All right, let's get right to the tutorial. The system I'll be demonstrating this on is my test bench system running Linux Mint 20.3, as you can see from the NeoFetch output right in front of you. It's pretty much stock mint, other than I enabled the proprietary NVIDIA driver to make the display run better since I'm running off of my GTX 970, and I also changed the clock in the bottom right of the screen, but that's not really that important. So the first step we need to do is install Flatpak. To do that, in a terminal, you just need to run sudo apt install Flatpak. Simple enough, right? This command will work if you're on a Debian-based distribution like Linux Mint, Ubuntu, Pop! OS, and the like. But if you're not, then you'll need to replace apt in the command to match your distro's package manager. For example, if you're on Fedora, Red Hat, or one of its clones, then you'd use DNF. For OpenSUSE, you would use Zipper, and for Arch and its descendants, you would use Pac-Man. But anyways, at this point, you can hit enter, enter your password if you're prompted for it, and accept the installation prompt if you get one. As you can see here, I already have it installed since Linux Mint has Flatpak already set up by default. Moving on, we now need to configure a software source for Flatpak to install from, and a good one to use is flathub.org. Open up a browser alongside your terminal, then enter flathub.org in your browser's address bar. Once you get this page, click on the quick setup link and then select the instructions for your distro. I'm going to select Mint, and this page just lets us know very thoughtfully that Flatpak is already installed and configured on Mint by default. So in this case, I would be good to go. But for demonstration purposes, I'm going to go back and select Ubuntu since that's pretty close. We've already done the first step to install Flatpak, and the second step here is to install the plugin for Software Center if you want to use the GUI to install your Flatpak software. Just copy and paste the command in your terminal and hit enter to install it if you want it, but I'm going to skip that for now. What we really want from this page is in the third step to add the Flathub software repository. Just copy this command, paste it in the terminal, and let's talk for a hot minute. One feature of Flatpak is that a user can install packages on their own into their own application directory without the need for an admin. So you could just run the command as is to enable the Flathub repo for your user and install apps for your user alone. But I personally prefer to install apps system-wide so that if, for whatever reason, I need to let someone else log in or use another user for a demonstration, then the apps are available to them as well. To do this, we just need to run with root privileges and prefix this command with sudo and then use sudo as well for any future Flatpak commands. Like I said, this is not needed. It just depends on your use case and preferences, so feel free to run without sudo if that's what you wish. All right, so now getting back to the tutorial, we just need to hit enter, enter your password if you're prompted for sudo, and if it worked, then you shouldn't see any output and we can move on. The web page here says we should reboot now. I normally don't need to do this after enabling the repo and installing Flatpak, but let's just do it now to be safe. Okay, so now we can finally install Flatpak apps using the flathub.org repo. First thing we need to do is open a browser and go to flathub.org, and you should end up with a page like this on the right. You can browse through the popular apps if you want, but let's go search for an app to install. Click on the search icon in the top right and type in what you want. I like to play old school RuneScape, so let's go ahead and search for RuneLight. Hit enter and click on RuneLight in the results. Now we have two options, GUI and Terminal. If you've enabled your distro's Software Center plugin, you can click on this install button on the top of the page, open the link in your Software Center, and then click on it like you normally would. Now that that's done, we can search for the app and open it like a normal application. Now to demonstrate the terminal, let's go to the Discord app. At the app page, scroll down to the bottom and you'll see a command line instructions section. Copy the first command to install the app, Paste it into your terminal, prefix the command with sudo if you're looking to install it system-wide, and then hit enter. You'll see some output as it downloads the app and its dependencies, and once it's complete, we can then open Discord like we normally would. So now that we're done with the tutorial, let's talk about why you'd want to use Flatpaks in the first place over your distro's native packages 
or even other containerized package formats like Snap and AppImage. Now that topic is a little volatile and has caused many a holy war over which is better, but I'm gonna boil it down to three main points. First, the main selling point for me for Flatpaks and other containerized formats are that they're distro agnostic and thus don't require separate packaging for every distro. It's really annoying when you want to use something like Discord or Spotify, which provide native packages for some distros like Ubuntu and Fedora, but not others. And having them packaged as flat packs removes that barrier for both users and developers, since users can be sure that as long as their distro supports Flatpak, then their app will run, and developers don't have to worry about a million different packaging formats and then worrying about testing it on a million different distros. This also has the benefit of if you have one specific version of a piece of software that you like and you know works for you very well without crashing, you can install specifically that version on whatever machine and distro you use well into the future, so long as you back up and retain that package to install later on. Second, Flatpaks are sandboxed by default and thus restricted to only having certain permissions which are required for the app to function. For example, you may want your web browser to only have permission to your downloads directory to protect yourself from rogue downloads infecting the rest of your system, or you may only want Discord to have access to your camera and mic so you can hop on your video calls. Now of course the apps you install can request whatever permit permissions they want, and if you're not careful with what apps you install, you could potentially open yourself up to a bunch of security issues due to a lack of sandboxing. But that's no different from native packages. And I'll also give a quick shout out here to Flatseal, which gives you a nice and simple UI to manage your Flatpak app permissions, which I've used plenty of times personally to allow things like Discord to access, for example, my pictures and videos directories to share files with all my friends. Thirdly, and finally, managing and updating apps is just better under Flatpak, in my opinion, compared to the other containerized packaging formats, Snap and AppImage. App images are more manually managed in like a Windowsy way, where you go to the app's website, download the app image file, and then click to install or run the application. And when you need to update, you need to go back to the website, download the new version, and repeat that whole process. Flatpak and Snap, on the other hand, are more like your traditional package managers, where you can search a repo and automatically install and update your packages through one command. And where Snap falls behind here is that you can only, and I mean only, use canonical snapcraft.io snap store to pull apps from. Whereas Flatpak has a more decentralized approach where you can use popular repos like flathub.org or you can use third-party repos or even host your own. It's the more Linuxy solution of the two. Now, of course, nothing is perfect and Flatpak is no exception. Flatpaks like the others, Snap and App Images, can take up a lot of extra space compared to native packages since they also package their dependencies for the apps and you can end up with a lot of duplicate libraries and such. For example, let's say that app A and app B both use library libc. In a traditional package manager, both app A and app B would just mark libc as a dependency to be installed and you'd only have one system-wide copy of libc installed. But with Flatpak, both apps would install a separate copy of libc in their sandboxes. This really isn't terrible since drives with a lot of storage space are pretty cheap these days, and a few hundred megs here or there really won't kill you but it is something to consider if you're running on like a 30 or 60 gig SSD for whatever reason. Also, Flatpak apps can have a bit heavier of a memory footprint by comparison to native apps. When native apps are loaded, if they require a library that's already in use by your OS or another app, then it will normally just link to and use the copy of the library that's already loaded in memory. But Flatpak and other sandboxed apps will always load their own copies of the libraries into memory, even if an exactly identical copy is already loaded. Now, Flatpak does have some mechanisms around this, like having some common platform dependencies that can be referenced by multiple Flatpak apps, but this obviously isn't a perfect solution and kind of negates the point of Flatpaks if everything is packaged separately to avoid duplicate libraries. So with all of that said, where does that leave us? Should we use Flatpaks over native packages or vice versa? Well, as with most things in tech and in life, everything has a place. Personally, I've been using native packages for most things like Firefox, Thunderbird, Clementine, and VLC, since the package versions provided by Linux Mint's repos are more than solid enough for me and do what I need them to do. But for closed sourced apps like Discord and Spotify, or apps that uh, don't have like a native package available like RuneLight or the Raspberry Pi Imager, 
I've been installing them as flat packs. And I find that Flatpak works really well for those use cases, since it allows the closed source proprietary apps to do whatever they want in their own little sandbox without affecting the rest of your system. And it also removes the need for scrambling around to find all of the correct dependencies and creating application shortcuts and such for apps that don't have a native package available. And while I don't personally do it, I have heard of people using app images to hold on to one specific version of an app like Caden Live that they want the specific one version that they know works uh, for them and don't want to risk upgrading so they don't potentially interrupt their workflow for making videos. All they do is just download the app image for Caden Live or whatever and then just store it on an ass and back it up so they have that exact version later on if they need to set up a new workstation or whatever. So ultimately this just boils down to you'll have to figure out what works best for you and there's really not much else to say about it. So to wrap it up, I hope this tutorial helped you. And if you disliked the video, then you know what to do. But if it did help and you did like it, then go hit that like button and also consider getting subscribed and hit the bell icon so you can keep up with my latest videos and show your support. I've also got a Discord server if you'd like to join the community and just chat and hang out with us. Or if you need it, there are also several channels to get help. I hope you all have a great day and I will catch you in the next one.